Yo, 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 yo. What's good, man? What's up to all my bull lifers, man? It's getting a little bit late in the day, but I'm still about to record this video anyway, just because some crazy news has been circulating pretty much, and it's, it's, it's kind of funny. So, all right, let, let's get straight into it, right? So earlier in the day, when I was handling my business, I get a report from Bleacher Report on my phone stating that the Chicago Tribune thinks that the Bulls want to offer Zach Levine a 14 to 16 mil per year contract. Okay, that was cool. Right after that, maybe 10 minutes later, I get another report from Bleacher Report stating that the Kings are super interested in Zach Levine and they are basically gonna try to make a run at Zach Levine. They're serious contenders in trying to sign Zach Levine. I was like, e what? For real, is this, is this real? But like five minutes later after that, another report comes through stating that the Bulls will extend the qualifying offer to Zach Levine, making him an RFA. All right, so basically what all of that told me was the Bulls thought that it was sweet. The Bulls didn't think that they basically had any other contenders to worry about when it came to Zion and Zach Levine. They thought that they had him just in a bag pretty much, I guess. Or maybe they thought that based on how he played uh, last season that there wouldn't be many people knocking down this door to sign him. But when you have teams who aren't comprised of too much talent and like the Kings, then that's kind of where you have a problem because then they basically don't have anything to lose and they'll throw out that money to a player who has any stint of talent whatsoever, which Zach Levine is a decent to really nice offensive player, but a horrible defender just flat out. But like I said, with a team like the Kings, they were willing to take that risk. They haven't been said to be willing to throw out a max contract to Zach Levine, basically. But what they are going to do is they're going to make a serious go at Zach Levine. Now, with the Bulls extending this qualifying offer to Zach Levine, what they just allowed themselves to be able to do is match any contract that any other team extends to Zach Levine. And so if Zach Levine loves Chicago more than he loves Sacramento and he wants to be here and the Bulls match that contract, he doesn't have any reason to leave, right? It's crazy that a team like the Kings just came out of nowhere and they're like ruffling these feathers. So it, it, it's definitely heating up. They're gonna have to make a decision, man, as to whether they wanna sign Zach Levine or not, because obviously there are some teams out there that are looking for his services. And if the Bulls are playing around with it, the Kings, like they're, like they're said to be, they're willing to snatch him up. So let's say if the Kings do throw a, um, a max offer to Zach Levine, I don't think that the Bulls are gonna match it. But to further my point, let me just read this quick short paragraph by uh, Luke Adams over at Hoop Rumors. Um, now this is essentially just talking about what KC Johnson is saying in terms of what the Bulls plan to do with Zach Levine. It reads, Levine could receive that long-term offer from the Kings who project to have up to about 19 million in cap room. Assuming Garrett Temple exercises his player option, that would be enough to accommodate a lucrative multi-year offer for Levine. Though the Bulls would likely match something in the four-year $80 million range, according to, to Johnson. An offer closer to the max would give Chicago calls to pause, Johnson adds. <laughs> Based on a $101 million, $101 million cap, a four-year max contract projects to be worth over $108 million. Pretty much what it's saying is the Bulls will match a four-year deal. If the Kings throw a four-year deal at Zach Levine worth up to like $20 million per meaning $80 million for four years, then the, the Bulls will match that offer. But if the Kings just try to throw the bank at him and they come out of nowhere and try to give him a $100 million deal, then the Bulls will pretty much back away from it. Me, personally, I do believe in Zach Levine. I believe in his offensive prowess. I think that he can be one of the top offensive players in the league in a few years, especially when you have those uh, older stars who 
pretty much fade out. I definitely can see Zach Levine by the time he's 25, 26, being one of those top tier offensive players. But I don't know if I have any hope for this defense. And also, also I, another thing I want to add, Zach Levine's team is super smart for throwing this out there because I don't think that this rumor would have leaked if it wasn't from if it didn't come from Zach Levine's team. I think that they wanted to get some leverage for Zach Levine so he could end up getting the most money possible from the Bulls. I do think that Zach Levine wants to stay in Chicago, but because of all of the reports stating that the Bulls are basically trying trying to lowball him, his team, his agents, whoever definitely put this story out there. Not saying that it's not legitimate. I definitely think it's legitimate. But I still think that it came from his camp. All right. But moving along, man. The Bulls also extended qualifying offers to David Nwaba and Ryan Archie Diaco. Now, extending the qualifying offer to David Nwaba, I, I applauded that. I thought that the Bulls were going to be super cheap. And I thought that they were going to... Like, well, they haven't giving him any like contract offer basically so they gave him his qualifying offer and i think that's around like two million or something like that and basically what that means is like if no other team comes for david nawaba then you know he'll basically have to take that two million dollar offer but the bulls can also match any offer that another team throws at david nawaba now i like that because I don't see another team trying to throw the bank at David Nwaba. I don't know, at least not a, not a team that I think that could use his services really. A team that's trying to rebuild, I don't think that they necessarily go after David Nwaba. If anything, I could see a team that's in contention for the playoffs or championships that will really seek David Nwaba's services. But most of those teams that are in championship contention are usually going after like more of the higher tier players but hey who knows they may try and come out of nowhere and throw david nawaba a nine to ten million dollar contract or something like that and at that point i think that the bulls would just let him walk i think they let him go and i would be really really sad to see david nawaba leave just because man i really love his grit and i love his grind especially coming from the the g league and paying his way onto a team like that's his story is crazy y'all but i get that one i get that qualifying offer to david nawaba but the ryan archie diacono one i'm not a huge fan of um ryan archie diacono i don't i definitely don't see another team throwing any money at him whatsoever so the bulls definitely don't have to worry about that but the thinking behind this one i think it was more so of a filler. I think the Bulls want to keep him just as a filler, basically. And there, like, he'll still, if he accepts the uh, the qualifying offer, he'll still he'll still just be on a two way contract. Now, I don't know why the Bulls haven't extended the same to uh, Antonio Blakeney, but they should definitely make that happen really soon because I would much rather have Antonio Antonio Blakeney than Ryan Archie Diacono. All right, moving along. The Bulls are said to have made a multi-million dollar offer to uh, Bobby Portis. The dollar amount is unknown. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see what happens with that. I hope that they're not trying to play Bobby Portis because I definitely see him as the type to see what's out there. And if someone throws him just a few dollars more than the Bulls, I could see him probably trying to take it. I think that Bobby Portis thinks that he may be better than just a six man. Because if he gets the opportunity, if a team comes in and they tell him that he'll be a starter on their team, and they're willing to pay him a bit more than the Bulls. You can't tell me that you think that Bobby Porter's will stay just because he loves Chicago so much. So that's why I say I hope that the deal is not disrespectful. Now, if he doesn't accept this offer, whatever it is, if he doesn't accept this offer that they extended to him, then he'll be in RFA the coming summer. So next summer, Bobby Portis would be a restricted free agent, but the Bulls will still be able to match any offer that he receives from any other team. So BP, don't leave, bro. We love you here in Chicago, man. Stick around, man. We gonna win some championships with you, for real, for real. All right. <laughs> no, no BS, but all right, let's move on. 
I was on Bleacher Report, and there was there's this guy named Zach Lowe. He's a senior writer for ESPN, right? Where he was talking about the Bulls on it, and he had a pretty interesting take on the Bulls this coming season or the Bulls in the near future. And I just want to read it real quick, just so y'all have a better idea of what he said. Quote, they're either, in a year, they're either going to look like a sleeping giant with all these interesting young players. We haven't even mentioned marketing. They just drafted Carter, who everyone loves. They're going to stink another year or be bad enough another year to get another good pick. They're either going to be a sleeping giant or we're going to watch all these guys play another year and think, eh, they're all okay or they're all pretty good. They don't have a straw that stirs the drink. Where are they going to get that guy? End quote. Now, this just goes back to what I was talking about in my last video when I was saying that I think that we should try and go after a Brandon Ingram or someone like that. This take makes a lot of sense to me. Like it, it definitely does. It definitely makes a lot of sense to me. Like the Bulls need that guy. And can that be Lori Marketing? Can Lori Marketing have a breakout year next year to the point where we're like, okay, he's the hands down best player, no brainer best player. What about Chris Dunn? If the Bulls sign Zach Levine, what about him? What about the two new guys, right? It's, it's, it's really unknown for now. In my eyes, I think that that player will have to be a player that is currently on this roster. Or it'll have to be a player that the Bulls, a young player that the Bulls go out and get, acquire through a trade, or, you know, they sign as a free agent. But along the lines of like a Brandon Ingram, what I mean by that is a young rising star. I don't, as I said, I don't think that the Bulls have enough time if they go out and get a 30 year old or something like that, a 30 year old star, because the the goal here is to win a championship, right? If the goal is to win a championship, then the Bulls will need time to build that camaraderie within the locker room. They'll need that time to learn each other's games. They'll need that time for each player to learn the system. And that takes time, man. That doesn't just happen within a year. That doesn't just happen within two years. I think that Lloyd Marketing definitely has that potential. I think that he has that potential to rise up and become a superstar in this league. I think that Chris Dunn, he even has the potential to become an all-star in this league. I don't know about a superstar, although I love his game and I would love for him to develop that way, but I don't know. With Zach Levine, he is only 23 years old right now, so I know that he could still learn, but some players just never get it on the opposite side of the ball. Some just they just never do, but maybe he can turn out like a James Harden and develop like super good offensive instincts and just be an average defender. So if something like us not going out and getting a rising star off of free agency or off of a trade, then the Bulls coaches will definitely have to develop these players to the max, man and they'll have to continue to build through the draft. I know that that isn't super sexy, but the draft definitely has great players in it. And I think that if we can pull something off to where we can get an uh, RJ Barrett or something like that, he's uh, another, he's a small forward, six, seven small forward, then I'm hearing a lot of rumblings about.
think that the Bulls can definitely make some noise, man, but it's definitely going to be a work in progress, and I have faith in the Bulls. I have faith that they can pull through and they can get things done, but we'll have to see, man. But that, that report definitely got me to thinking. I don't have to let it marinate in my mind some more just to come up with more ideas as to like how the Bulls maybe can find that guy, but it definitely got me to thinking, man. So moving on. So the last thing that I have to talk about is Wendell Carter Jr. So he basically wrote a story uh, about his life that's posted on the Players Tribune. And the name of the uh, the story that he wrote is called I'm Ready to Fly. And what it entails is his life story. It just talks about his upbringing uh, coming from Atlanta, Georgia and how his parents raised him. Uh, both of his parents worked at the airport. It was a really inspirational story and it was a nice quick read. I enjoyed it. Um, and it, it just it just gives you more insight into Wendell Carter's life and how much he preached. He preaches hard work. This kid is always talking about work, work, work. And I see why from listening to this story. And I don't know, it was just a really good story, man. It's something to check out. If you want to, I'll leave the links in the description below. So yeah, man, uh, go check it out if you want. But besides that, that's pretty much all of the news that I have for today. It wasn't a whole lot, but hey, as I said, I'm gonna talk about pretty much anything that I see or hear about the Bulls because I'm here to give us our Bulls fix and that's what I'm gonna do. So anyway, <laughs> I enjoyed delivering the news to you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed listening to it and uh, I'll be back the next time I hear anything else that circulates that has to do with the Bulls. So um, until then, if you're new here, like, subscribe. As I said, I'm gonna be uploading videos pretty much anytime I hear any news about the Bulls. So if you're a Bulls lover, why not? You know what I mean? Help yourself and subscribe, man. But anyway, I'm going to holler at y'all. It's love. It's your man, Wise Black. I'm signing out.